Caddis Maximus here. This actually isn't a review. I've already reviewed one of these Milwaukee uh, O375s. This is actually another one that I found. This video is about repairing loose spindles and clamshell tools. Clamshell tools or drills, I should say, are ones that just have two halves of the body. Real common. They actually hold up pretty well. This Milwaukee is pretty nice. It's all ball and needle bearing. But the issue is, is under heavy use and time, especially if you use them where they get real hot, it kind of mushes up the plastic bosses, the supports that are inside. And on this my other Milwaukee, it's really tight. But on this one, a little bit hard to see. But there's a bit of play in that chuck from side to side. You can really see it right there. And that's from it getting mushed up. And so the best way that i found to attempt to deal with this issue, one, is sometimes you can just get in there and just put a little bit of extra pressure on the screws. And sometimes that will tighten it up just enough to kind of get rid of that play. I just did that here. And it still didn't do great. So the real fix here, what I found, is to find to get like go to Harbor Freight because it's only like four or five bucks. Get a set of the shim stock that they have or feeler gauges because they give you a bunch of pieces of sheet metal of very thin thicknesses. We're going to take some shears, we're going to cut, off, cut them off in the right side of strips and add some shims to the around the bearings that are causing it to be loose. Clamshells are common. Now plastic housing drills, this isn't just about, this isn't about the Hitachis, this is about a uh, single piece or mono piece uh, gearboxes. Even when they're plastic, they tend to hold up a lot better than they do with the clamshells. Manufacturers use clamshells because you only need two halves, one, two, two molds. A lot cheaper than something like this where you need a mold for this, a mold for the diaphragm, a mold for the motor housing, a mold for the removable housing. That's four molds. So it's a lot cheaper to do it this way. And that's indeed why they do it. I don't think we have any screws under the stickers here. Let's go and get these screws out of here. really do like this little Makita driver. It's perfect for stuff like this. Come on now, what the heck? You don't want to impact these screws back in there because you could easily strip them out. Quite a few screws. What do we got? Nine screws in there? So they are trying to hold it together pretty decently. And we will actually unplug it, that might be nice. And slowly work the two halves of the clamshell part here. There we go. On clamshells, it's usually this, see, people talk about too much grease. That's one thing that Milwaukee has never been shy on. They always pack their tools with tons of grease. This is from the factory. I've never seen a Milwaukee tool that didn't have a just a massive amount of grease. Here's our little rods for the trigger. The Milwaukee's, these aren't bad. And it truly is all ball bearing. Ball bearings on both sides of the motor. Ball bearings on each side of the reduction gear. A couple nice sized ball bearings on each side of the uh, spindle. But we can see how close together these get. And so what ends up happening is just the fact that these little supports here just end up getting a little bit mushed, end up getting a little bit squished. So all we're going to do is put on each side, see they have this hollow support so it's just a square of plastic and it really is easy to get mushed once again so we're going to go ahead and just cut off. It's not moving very much, so usually you start off with a very thin one, maybe a thousandths or two thousandths, and move up from there. And we're just going to cut up here. We got a two and a half thousandths. That ought to be just, just right. And I'm going to cut a couple of pieces just to put there and there, and once again on each side on the uh, on this other half of the clamshell. If it's really loose, then you can actually just wrap this all the way around the bearing and then just cut off a little strip. And I was considering doing that here, but it's really the side to side play that's worse than the uh, play like this versus back and forth like this. So I'm just going to cut off a few little pieces here, trim them down because this is still 
really too wide to fit on the bearing. I'll just cut it into a, I'll basically just cut this thing in half. Feeler gauges are hardened steel. Thin ones are pretty easy to cut, but as they get thicker, um, you'll probably end up having to use a Dremel or something like that. Of course, we'll need four pieces, not too big. And I've got my four pieces here. They're just little pieces like that. We'll get a little bit of zoom in here. So this is just gonna be super rudimentary. Actually on this side I can see that they're a lot bigger so I have a lot more space. So in that case I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, change this up. I'm gonna cut a couple longer ones because of that. We have small bosses on this side it's stuck on my finger <laughs> and bigger bosses on this side so that's all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these set them in there I may even kinda pre bend them a little bit just so they'll stay in there a little bit better and just insert one like so do the second one in here like so just a little bit fidgety doing this. And then just drop that back in there. Now we've actually shimmed that up. And then on the top side, we'll just have to do it, fold those up a little bit and just set them on top. Just like so, it's not uh, quantum physics or anything like that. Oh, look at that, I managed to cut it and actually maintain the size. I'll actually leave it like that, so maybe I'm gonna end up selling this one because I already have one of these units. We'll see how that works out. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the grease that's in there because this thing is already heavily greased. And I've got to remember how to the trigger on these is interesting because it uses this rod and the trigger pushes on the rod this the triggers a lever pushes on the rod pushes on a rocker which then pushes on the uh, um, trigger. It's kind of a complicated mechanism. And you're going to hold the trigger while you put the clamshell back on. And of course I didn't get this damn collar in the right spot. Have to make sure the protective collar is in its like a little lip there. And just like so let me get these screws back in here quick note there is one screw that's shorter and it actually goes into the top here where there just is a reduced amount of plastic all right we got it back together give it a run gear sure sound nice make sure you didn't get any of those pieces of strips of metal in the gears now if we look really tight in both directions as a matter of fact let's get a drill bit in there to run straight now even with the drill bit 
maybe if I wobble it there kind of hard to see but that was a successful endeavor the spindle of this is now really tight and eventually you'll use this it'll heat up you'll put a lot of pressure but in long bits and it will loosen up again you can try once again tightening the screws if not you pull out those shims I put two and a half in, in there so you may put in like three thousandths and that's kind of the deal with these is that you'll have to kind of if you, you the tool goes under heavy use then it's just going to be part of the regular maintenance. I've seen this on DeWalt, Milwaukee's, all sorts of brands all suffer from this if you really use the tool. What's kind of a shame is that this Milwaukee, as we can tell by the minimum amount of wear on it, hasn't been used that much and still had a little bit of a wobble in the spindle. The other reason that you want to put shims on both sides is to maintain the gear alignment so the gears last a long time. Gears their lifetime is dependent on how tightly they're held in place and the big issue with a tool like this is if you start having a wobbly spindle then as you're drilling with it when the gears are meshing they're wobbling back and forth causing high pressure on one side and then high pressure on another wearing them out much more quickly so that's why you want to uh, do that and why you want to make sure when you do that shim that you put shims on both sides that way you're not shifting the, the spindle from one side to the other you want to make sure it's stayed centered relative to the body so you always have to put shims on both sides anyway that's a pretty universal technique I've done it on a lot of drills and so if you have like a DeWalt or any other clamshell plastic drill that you like but the spindle is starting to get a little bit loose take it apart cut off some pieces of shim stock and uh, shim up those bearings tighten it back down and it will be as good as new I'm really surprised how well that worked on this but I probably shouldn't be but it's absolutely perfect now they weren't too thick there is no gap you know you put it in too thick when you try to screw it down there's still like a little gap in the body then you know you've gotten too thick and you're gonna have to put in slightly thinner ones but that was a perfectly successful endeavor now the spindle on this is just like <laughs> brand new anyway I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.